Welcome back to the 4.5G Summit here at MWC 2016. So this uh, early afternoon thus far, we've covered the vision, the gigabits per second, and experience 4.0 for 4.5G. Uh, we start off this second half with Connections Plus. And our first speaker in this segment is from the world's largest mobile network operator, with the world's largest mobile subscriber base. He's responsible for wireless R&D, including LTE, LTE Advance, and 5G. He's also a leader in global standards bodies, chair of the Spectrum Working Group of the Global TD LTE Initiative, and vice chair of CCSA TC5 Working Group number six. Everybody, please join me in welcoming the Chief Technology Officer of the Wireless Department, at China Mobile Research Institute, Lu Guanxi. Lu? Thank you. Okay. Good? Okay. Can you hear me? Okay. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. It's my great honor to be here to share our thinking on the continued evolution of TDLT. Uh, just before I just show you, uh, show some uh, numbers in downstairs. Here, I like to see you again. First, I like to see you, uh, our you know current network status. The numbers of the base station, uh, just as the chair has mentioned, we are the largest one because now for TDLT, we already have 1.1 million base station of TDLT has been deployed. We have about 300 million subscribers in our network already. And at the end of this year, our target, of course, is try to achieve 1.5 million space station in our networks and about 500 subscri million subscribers in our network for 4G. Okay, so thanks uh, very much for the support from our vendors like Huawei and others. We are really achieve our target for the next few years, try to provide a, you know, seamless coverage for the whole China. And for the next last year, we are working together, also work together, try to you know, provide the higher capacity and the deeper coverage, and of course, the wider coverage, not only for the rural area, but also for the you know, high-speed train. Maybe it's unique in China, we have a very long distance high-speed train, you can really achieve 250, even more uh, kilometers per, per, per hour, very high speed, how to solve it, uh, coverage problem, and also competitive is our uh, very hot topic in the last few years. And of course, we already introduced the carrier aggregation in our networks, and we can have achieved more than 200 megabits per second peak data rates. And also thanks for the new uh, features like the downlink carrier aggregation, and be informing of eight antennas and also uplink multi user MIMO and also COMP relay, which really help us to uh, build our own excellent 4G networks and boost our user experience step by step. For the network itself, maybe the people just believe, oh, you have already have the coverage for, 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 the, for the whole country, so maybe it's enough for you to. You can just stay here and just wait. The money just to drop down from the, from the sky. But from us, we believe we need to do more. We need to make our network evolve step by step and try to boost the user's experience step by step because we have uh, competitors just stay, stay just along with us and they will finish their you know, network deployment of their 4G networks and, and also for, for the Penetration rate increase very fast in our markets. Our huge uh, amount of the subscribers will come into 4G networks. In that case, we have to consider the capacity boosting for the whole networks to try to you know, guarantee the user experience and even boost the user's experience. So to achieve this, we also are thinking how to evolve to, five, uh, for, to future network, especially Recent few years, I think 5G becomes very hard. And even in downstairs, there's some discussion on the 5G. And it is 
it will be coming to being by year 2020. So as an operator, we need to consider how we just uh, make the uh, evolution step to the 5G. Here I'd like to show you just this. Uh, now we already, of course, we are already have the 4G. Now we have already launched part of the, part of the feature of uh, 4G+. Plus. For 4G+, Plus, of course, you can already enjoy our voting services in many, many cities. And also, for further enhancement, we, can, we hope we can achieve 1 gigabit per second big data rates that we can really uh, give us the capability to, bro, uh, to offer some new services like uh, argument, argument, uh, reality, uh, augmented reality and also virtual reality, something else. And also, the last thing is we cannot put more and more spectrum to our networks. It's quite limited. So we need to consider how, also how to boost the spectrum efficiency of the whole networks. So we have a target five times. Later I will show you how can we really achieve this. Now, after this, of course, we will go to the, you know, 5G by year 2020, step by step. Uh, first, maybe in the low, low frequency band, and later on the high frequency band. And here, I just show you the, our consideration on how to mapping the 3GPP standards to our different phases of our networks. Until now, we already deployed features Features like the characterization, like multi-user MIMO, something else in our network, we call it as 4G. And for 4G+, plus, we believe we need to introduce more and more features, like uh, uh, release 13, release 12, release 14, which is still going, ongoing. And also, of course, after that, we'll go to 5G. Release 14, 15, and release 16. Then we can go to some new air interface with some other capabilities, we try to help us to grow our revenue and uh, uh, cultivate some new business model. To achieve what is the target I have mentioned before, one gigabit per second in downing, how can we really achieve that? Of course, the first one, we need the more spectrum. So we need the characterization. We're never talking about the t only TDD or both TDD and FDD together. Of course, with more spectrums, of course, we can achieve Higher, uh, higher data rates. And the second one is the down, higher order modulation in the downlink, just like I mentioned here, from 64 QAM to 256 QAM, especially for the indoor scenario. It's very possible to do that. Also already have uh, finished the trials with our partners. Now it is proved that one third of the throughput can be improved by this uh, high order modulation. And also we need to introduce uh, high order uh, MIMO to even further to improve the peak data rate of the network. Like here, I just show you 60% uh, uh, peak data rate can be improved due to, by the four layers MIMO, which will be introduced to be in TM9. And also for the opt-in, we already have done many, many things recently, especially in GTI together with our partners. Uh, we have introduced the uplink characterization and the uplink 64 QAM in our networks. We're just waiting for the smartphone to support it. Then we can just really help our customers to enjoy enhanced uplink user experience. And, and of course, uplink MIMO, our network already supports these features. We're just waiting for the terminal to support it. Then we can just make it happen in our networks. And also for the spectrum efficiency, improvement we have a uh, target to improve five times. We already introduced a comp in the downlink interside and interside comp. It's really give us uh, some imp performance improvement like uh, uh, more than 30% of the CO8 data rates. And for TDD, of course, we have a uh, benefit to, you know, adapt the change the downlink ratio and uplink ratio to adapt the dynamic traffic load in the uplink and downlink, then we can just make full use of TDD spectrums. Then we can just uh, boost the total throughput of the whole networks, not only on downlink, but also uplink. We already have done these trials together with our partners, and also it is proved that more than 40% of the CO average throughput can be improved. And also another features we are working on is the network assistant interference cancellation, which is a very, very important feature for us such kind of functionality, uh, such kind of rational has been, you know, verified in our 3G networks. By the network assistance, 
the terminal can help to cancel the interference from living cell. Of course, then at the cell age, we can you know, improve the performance at the cell age. We hope 30% performance gain can be achieved by these uh, features. Another one, I think it's the most important um, technology is, is a smart, is an antenna. Here I just mentioned, I named it as, terminated as a three-dimensional MIMO. As you know, for TDD system, we can make use of the uh, TDD channel reception. That means for the uplink and downlink this year, the same um, channel, uh, channel feeding. If you can make use of the uplink reception, of course, you can do very good uh, beam forming in the downlink. Currently, we already deployed eight antennas in our networks. We call it a smart antenna, which can really give us very, very stable performance for the whole networks, not only at the cell center, but also at the cell edge, due to its very accurate beam forming and try to focus the uh, power and the uh, wanted, expected direction. Then we can really achieve very good performance at the cell edge and also improve the performance at the cell centers. For smart antenna, now we already have eight. If we can have more, of course, we have big rooms to you know, explore more and more gains to improve whenever I talk about the cell edges throughput or cell average throughput. Especially here, I just you, we can, if we have more antennas, of course, we can have better coverage for the cell edge. We can have better interference control among the different cells, even in, the, in, in, in one cells among different users. Of course, here, I just you, we can also have very high order, much user MIMO, which is very, very essential for us to improve the uh, cell average throughput without and adding more spectrums to the networks. So our target is try, we, can, we hope we can just achieve one to four times uh, cell average throughput uh, improvement. And, and the cell age is four to six times cell uh, uh, average uh, cell age uh, data rates Fortunately, it's not a dream. And in last year, we have finished the commercial trials with Huawei in Shanghai. I think we really achieved what we want. Here is just you. Here is the one site for the testing. And we try to compare the performance of eight antenna and 128 antennas in the same sites. And also in our commercial network with the same uh, carriers with uh, uh, as the Libran sales, just it's a very, very practic, practical scenario. We try to see if we just replace one base station, how, what will happen to our networks. And from the, from the size of the antenna, you can see it's a 128. It's really a massive antenna. But the size, of course, looks similar to what we already used a smart antenna with eight antennas. Just a little bit shorter, uh, but uh, broader. From the test results, uh, we can see for eight antenna, we can achieve 40 megabits per second for one cell. But with three dimension MIMO, you can see it's amazing. 340 megabits per second. But of course, here we use the full buffer services, but with uh, about 16 users multiplexing together just in one carrier in the same uh, radio resource. And the data rate, the peak data rate you can see here, achieved about 650 megabits per second. It's five times of the one carrier, 120 improved. It's very, very promising for future. So now we are still trying to you know, uh, do the trials in a practical service configuration, for example, with some, you know, burst type, burst type of traffic, then we believe maybe the, the gain will be a little bit lower, but I believe it's also very, very promising for the future. And also, for the next step, of course, currently, our trials are only based on the, you know, the implementation. That means there's no impact to our current smartphone, our legacy terminals, it's only just change, you know, just change the antennas implementation based on the channel receptivity of TDD. That's the, I think that's the advanced feature of TDD. 
when after they are talking about the four antennas evolution, we already go to a huge one, 64 or more than 128. Now 3GBB are working on the three-dimensional mammals uh, standardization. If we can just introduce some you know, enhancement, like here I mentioned, enhanced DMS, DMS for the multi-user MIMO, and the enhanced CQR and sounding for the uplink measurement, and also better multi-user interference control. I believe we can achieve even higher uh, average sales throughput. So we, we believe, I believe we, really, we can achieve, really achieve four times and six times a sales edge data rate in the practical networks. After a few years operation of the RT networks, we really cultivated the users' uh, data consumption, uh, consumptions, you know, habit. More and more people like to use RT networks, and their uh, data volume every month is incurring step by step. But for Chernobyl side, we believe we are not only we can only uh, we also need to further optimize the network's capability. For example, the latency network capability and latency, and also some other thing like uh, uh, routing and also the traffic demand for the, for the backport networks and so on. We need to do more things to, you know, to optimize the whole user's, uh, user experience, especially to explore the vertical markets, especially for the vertical markets, usually. Uh, for example, enterprise of the markets. Usually, we, as the current network architecture of AOT is not enough to serve the, our customers. So we try our best and to innovate some new technologies, especially together with our partners like Huawei, like others. We try to you know, implement the, uh, the data ca catching in our networks and also some you know, local routing, local switching in our networks. And even we are trying to promote the you know, user and service aware scheduling and uh, transmission to our networks, then we can really achieve, you know, a smart radio access network. Make uh, the radio pipe is a smart pipe, not only a down pipe. Okay, I think, especially before this similar, this uh, MBLT, I think, uh, a summit, uh, they are discussing the vertical markets, I believe. Also, every operators here, every vendors here, I believe the vertical markets is very, very important for future. But anyway, I believe it will take a long time to cultivate the markets. We need to start as early as possible. So, from China Wall side, we also believe we need to, you know, build our capability, you know, to explore the vertical markets like vehicle to vehicle, like uh, uh, inter Internet of Things, whenever EMTC on our IoT network or Narabad IoT for FDD networks, we believe we need to do it. Uh, build our enablers, we, then we try to you know, explore the, and cultivate the new business model and grow our revenue for future step by step. So we will start this for 40 plus. Here I just show you some trial results for high order modulation, together with Huawei based on their lab site and uh, also based on their book RU. From the results we, you can see here, we really achieve what we expected. The peak data rate can really achieve uh, specified in 3GBP, and we believe it, it can be practical in our networks, so we will introduce it step by step. Finally, I'd like to summarize what we are thinking about for the evolution from the 4G to 5G. We call it as the 4G plus. We, at, the, at, the, at this time, we are trying to introduce the features before the release payoff because it's almost matured for the, introduct for the introduction into our networks, like the DDD, FDD carrier aggregation, like the Downing 256 uh, qual, like TM9, we have done the testing in our network, uplink carrier aggregation, and uplink qual, I think, I believe this year we will have some uh, chipset and terminals which can support these features, and also uplink MIMO. We're waiting for the vendors to support us. For the spectrum efficiency, of course, we will continue to introduce the, you know, the uplink, uh, uplink comp and the lags. And also, of course, three-dimension MIMO based on the implementation of the TDD channel receptivity. Then we can really achieve very, very good uh, network uh, capacity and quality. And also, of course, flexible deployment 
because uh, for our indoor scenarios, we only use 2 plus 3 for the dedicated deployment the, the coverage. So it's very possible for us to, you know, to have the dynamic TDD in our cluster-based uh, styles. That means in just in one building, we can change the, uh, the configuration of the uplink downlink ratio for all the base stations. Then we can just uh, avoid the interference between different cells. For the next step, we try to introduce new features in RAIS 14 and, of course, RAIS 13 to further enhance our network capacity and capabilities like uh, high order carrier aggregation, high order uh, modulation in uplink, and also three, MIMOS, three dimension MIMOS further enhancement based, based on the protocol upgrade. And also flexible development like a smart uh, run, we try to build our capability to uh, help the network to open its network, uh, capability to the external players like uh, OTT, like some virtual network operators, then we can just go on and cultivate some new base model. And also, very important sense is the vertical markets, we believe. It's very, very important. It's, uh, it's our future. So we will start to work on it to try to build our network capability to make it happen in the near future and cultivate the market to, to grow the revenue step by step. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for your attention. That's all my presentation. Thank you. Thank you.